Welcome to the second episode of the Tertius Times. Uh, today, for the first five minutes, uh, I'm going to look at uh, a few reports that are out there on the internet uh, to give you some uh, uh, thoughts and uh, prayer needs. Uh, certainly, this young girl here uh, from Coptic Solidarity, yet another Coptic Christian kidnapped in Cairo. Uh, this is in Egypt, obviously. Uh, she's 15 years old. This was last uh, week on the 17th. That's when this was reported. Um, her name is Rhonda Fatala Fale, and just keep her in mind. Um, I haven't heard uh, anything yet uh, regarding her um, status. Again, this was a week ago, but this is something apparently that has been uh, going on, young girls being kidnapped in Egypt. So again, keep her in your prayers and hopefully she will return safely to her family. Uh, another story here we have from the Morning Star News is a pastor's wife, 19-year-old injured in attack on Christians. This is in Hyderabad in India. Uh, pastor's wife is still bedridden after uh, hardline Sikhs and Hindus broke her leg in an attack on their church last month in northern India, according to some sources there. Now, I, uh, um, I did not mention this in my introduction on the first episode, uh, but I did work for a Sikh uh, on human rights uh, issues in India, and uh, Sikhs in general are some of the nicest warmest, kind-hearted people you will ever meet. But uh, unfortunately, in many cases, you get more radical, hardline types uh, across the board, uh, no matter what you're dealing with. And that's usually just bad news. Uh, from Bangladesh, this is from Human Rights Watch. Fleeing Rohingya die at sea. Uh, Rohingya are uh, uh, ethnic Muslims uh, in uh, Myanmar. Uh, they've been um, uh, persecuted. In fact, uh, some have been calling what's happening to them a genocide at the hands of the uh, Myanmar government and authorities. Uh, Myanmar is a largely Buddhist country, so uh, keep those people in your hearts and minds as well. Uh, persecution uh, uh, is, is something that's uh, universal. And when the, uh, you have ideas that are contrary to a certain group, uh, no matter what uh, that issue is, it's uh, uh, usually ripe for persecution. Now, this is actually from last year. Uh, this is ISIS tried to kill Christianity in Iraq. Here's why they failed. So uh, just over a year ago, August of last year, this is from Open Doors the same group that had the background uh, to the podcast uh, from yesterday. Uh, this is a, uh, an inspirational story of uh, some Assyrian uh, Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox Christians. Uh, here's a priest. Uh, here's one of the women, Dahlia. There's a few other women uh, mentioned in this story, as you can see as I'm going through it. There's a number of them right there. But this is a story about uh, the resilience of faith and the strength uh, that they had. Uh, this one uh, from the Moscow Times, uh, I actually found it through this uh, website, the US Commission on International Religious Freedom. Um, but again, this is from the Moscow Times, Russian Jehovah's Witness jailed for Bible talk. Uh, this one uh, uh, struck me as rather uh, silly, although it is a very serious issue. Again, People should just have the right to believe whatever they want to believe uh, and have uh, the freedom uh, to uh, speak about it. And we all should then have the, uh, the freedom to uh, agree, disagree, believe it or not. Um, and so Jehovah's Witnesses, even though we would consider them, uh, at least I would, as a cult, uh, they still should be allowed to... Uh, talk about whatever they believe. And so finally, again, uh, this is a great source here, uh, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. 
to uh, uh, learn about uh, persecutions, uh, violation of human rights, uh, freedom of conscience uh, all over uh, the world. And I will rely uh, uh, very extensively on the reporting that they put out. All right, so the, the second half of this podcast will be our continued interview with uh, Aryan and Ahmed, so enjoy. I just want to interject in here uh, very quickly that my question to Aryan and Ahmed had to do uh, with their parents, stories uh, their parents may have told them uh, when the Taliban uh, reigned in the 90s. Do you remember any particular stories uh, with, um, that they told you that would illustrate uh, how difficult life was? Yes. Uh, so my, uh, so there was a, so like the story, uh, what they told me is that uh, like women, they did not have any rights. Like they couldn't become no doctor no teacher, can't go outside to vote, no freedom of uh, speech, uh, basically nothing. The only thing they could do was uh, stay in home like all day, like right. all day, do not, do not come out. And the rules were very strict also for uh, uh, males too. There was also very strict for, for uh, oh, people also. So you earlier said uh, you went to school there. Um, you obviously both being males. Um, were females, were girls allowed to even go to school? Uh, so I would add that. I'll add more to that. Um, so at that time, uh, females, they were not allowed to go to school. So uh, they were not allowed to go outside. But male, they were allowed uh, to go to schools and study, become doctor uh, right or whatever but the hardest uh, thing was for male is there were some uh, sharia rules which uh, they call this uh, taliban they call it sharia law which under that there are some rules for example if you steal something they would uh, uh, cut your arms or, or if you did ad other things uh, th so those were kind of the rules for male uh, Okay. All right. Um, any, anything else you, you want to add? Because um, we're just about out of time for this segment. Uh, just something related to your experience um, growing up there in Afghanistan. Yes. Yeah, so, so as a, me and my brother, as we were going to school, even though like at the time, you know, like it was not Taliban time, there was still fear in people. Okay. There were... Like a, the person that they were still fear for their life, even though they're going to school, college, teacher, they're going to go to teach. They still had the fear in them. It's a little bit fear because they fear for their, you know, life because, you know, because Taliban, they uh, do kind of their mission secretly, you know, like one place they, you know, bomb this school or that place. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, they... Oh, uh, they what they did is the like you know how um, we know when the American they came to Afghanistan to help you know they built very nice bridges, roads, schools. Uh, gave uh, they also gave our uh, military you know support and stuff and uh, etc. I will add more to it a little bit. Uh, but I was also feeling uh, a lot of insecure because. Uh, a background that it's educated a lot of those uh, people like taliban they were doing stuff like secretly like as my, my brother said so they were still killing oh. people like for example bombing uh, 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 mosques uh, bombing uh, uh, some wow. government stuff yeah like government buildings and uh, pool and bridges and other things all right um that's, uh, yeah, that would be pretty scary. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. so, all right, we, uh, uh, we will stop there. I think that's a good introduction for people uh, to get a sense uh, of 
your lives, uh, what life was like for uh, older members of your family, uh, your, your mother, your father, your grandparents, and et cetera. And then uh, for the rest of the segments that we'll have, uh, we'll talk about uh, history, um, um, politics, religion, and, and all that. So uh, we will take that up next time.